Welcome to the kitchen. All right, I want to show you how I make easy tinctures. I'm also going to make some cough syrup, which I started already. So we're going to kind of do the process, the rest of it together. And uh, what else are we going to make here? An oxymeal uh, we're going to make as well, which is really just a tincture. It's just a fancy name for acid and honey mixed together but we're going to do the acid part tonight because it takes a couple weeks so i'm going to show you guys these three simple really easy uh ways to make some medicine right at home do it yourself with nature of course so i have already let's show this out here now i brewed i started out with two cups of water and I'll post the video later, but I have some echinacea, some cinnamon, some cardamom, a little cayenne pepper in here, and I brewed it in two cups of water uh, till it went down to about half, and I strained it out a couple times. I used all my cheesecloth, it's still a little bit in there. Oh, and thyme. Thyme is the, the main ingredient in there. And it smells really nice, but we're going to make this into a cough syrup. So this is our medicinal ingredients. Thyme is really healthy for you. It's really good for coughs and colds and sore throats. So is echinacea. Um, and the cinnamon, cayenne, and cardamom also give you a good boost um, for your throat um, and cough as well as your immune system. They're all really good and healthy. So it's not much in there. I'm only going to make a little bit. So I have about three quarters of a cup, maybe between half and three quarters. I started out with two cups. Now I have some Canadian pure creamed honey, unpasteurized. So we're gonna use about a cup of this. So we're just gonna heap it in there. I'm not even gonna measure. Maybe a little less than a cup. Three of these is about a cup. We'll put in two. So now what we want to do is I'm going to put this on the stove. I don't want it to cook. I want it to heat. So we don't want this to boil. I want to keep all the benefits of the honey still in here. And if we start to heat it and boil it too much, we're going to lose all those benefits from the honey. So honey is has got all kinds of... Uh, antimicrobacterial, antifungal, and it's just really healthy and medicinal for you. Um, I know some of you vegans out there uh, don't eat honey. That's okay. You can make the same recipe using sugar. Uh, you just have to cook it a little bit longer, and you may need to reheat it as you use it. So I just gave this a little bit of a mix. And I'm just going to put this on the stove. Well, we won't be here to finish, but I will come back to show you guys. So I'll put that in the bowl. So I'm going to want to cook this for at least 30 to 60 minutes. Like I said, I'm just trying to infuse the honey and the, uh, the mixture that I made here, the concoction. Uh, and then I'm going to be able to put it in a jar and put it in the fridge. And we can use that a couple spoonfuls when we have sore throat or cough um, or a little bit of respiratory issues. So I'm gonna put this on the stove, not directly on the heat. I have it raised up a bit. So put that on there. So now I wanna show you guys how to make the tincture. Now I was gonna mix this, but we're gonna keep it really simple. If you've never made one before, what we're doing is we're taking plant matter and we're infusing it in some alcohol. <laughs> That's right in some vodka now you can use glycerin however um you really want the alcohol because it pulls out almost all of the benefits from the plant whereas the glycerin it will eventually but it could take a really really long time and when you start mixing um the oil with a little bit of water regardless there's going to be water um it, there's a chance it could go rancid so it's best to stick with alcohol you want anything over 80 proof. 
So this is 40% alcohol, which is actually 80 proof. If you could get more, that's even better. So what we want to do is I have all my echinacea here. I actually have another jar somewhere. I can't find it, so we'll use this stuff. So, and we want to fill it up just about, about half. Have uh, be careful there's pricklies in here hi thanks for joining me so i just got the cough syrup started already if you missed it um i'll do a replay uh with the video after we're making our tincture right now we want to use alcohol so i went and got some stuff here um to be honest with you i don't know if this is the right quality i don't drink or anything all i know is this is the right proof and that's what we want so this is what I got because <laughs> I'm clueless about alcohol. But I know we need a nice vodka at 80 proof minimum. And that's what we have here. So I just filled this up, my echinacea. Didn't do anything fancy. It was already crushed up a little bit in my jar. And ooh, that's stinky. I'm just going to slowly fill it up. We want it to go at least an inch to two inches above. Hopefully I have enough. Above the herbs. Yep, or just enough. Look at that. Look at that. Nobody gets the leftovers. <laughs> All right. And literally, that's it. If you have parchment, it's a really good idea to put some parchment over here. Helps keep it a little bit dark. Um, but I'm going to put it in the dark pantry, so it should be okay. I'm going to put this lid on just like this. Nice and tight. You want to shake it really well. And you want to do this a couple times a day for the next month. At least a month. Longer is better. Um, if you're going to go by the moon cycles, they say generally two to three moon cycles a month. But I like to about eight weeks is, is usually... Uh, I, like to, I like about eight weeks. is about uh, the best method to, to get a real good infusion. So I'm going to put this in the pantry. I'm going to put it away. And when we come back in eight weeks... What I'm going to do is I'm going to strain all this out. I'm going to put it in a dark jar, and then when I need it, I'm only going to take a couple drops at a time. I could take it right in my mouth. I could put it in some tea or water or another drink, and that is it. That is your medicine. That is your tincture. Uh, echinacea, like I said, is really good for your respiratory, good for cough and cold, good for all this area here, as well as an immune booster. But there is a but when you use echinacea. This is a 10 days on, 10 days off. So you don't use it for more than 10 days at a time because what happens is you start to build up a toxicity to it and then it starts to do the opposite. So get your benefits for 10 days, then put it away for a couple weeks and then pull it back out and you're good to go. So that's the only thing with echinacea. It has amazing, amazing benefits, but you need to cut it off after, after 10 days or so just so you don't build up a toxicity to it. So that's the tincture. Let's see if this is heating up. All right, so this is mixing. This is our syrup. It smells good. So now generally you can leave out the cinnamon or the cardamom uh, and just use the thyme and cayenne pepper, but it doesn't taste very good. And echinacea doesn't make it taste very good either. So like I said, we're just going to keep heating this up on low until it's nice and infused and then I'll put it in a jar and that's it. And that is cough syrup. Really easy. Okay, I think I put the wrong lid on my jar. <laughs> we're going to open this back up. So just remember guys to shake this a couple times a day for the next 30 to 60 days or two to three moon cycles. All right, and the last thing we're gonna make here, now this is going to be the first half for Oxymil. Now I got lots of clover saved up because I'll be using this in my salves. So what we wanna do is I'm just gonna do a little bit here because I'm not gonna be using a whole lot of this. But we'll break that up. I want about half a jar. A little bit more, a little bit more. 
So red clover, guys, is really good for us ladies. It's good, especially if you have heavy menstruation, cramping. It's really good for menopause, osteoporosis, process. <laughs> uh, it's good for your blood circul circulatory system. Uh, and it's just a really, really good um, medicinal plant for us ladies in particular, men too, but it likes us ladies a little bit more. So what we're going to do is I got some apple cider vinegar here. And oxymil, as I said, is just an ancient way of saying acid and honey. So we're going to start with the acid. And if you guys remember, I did the same thing for my sage and lavender hair rinse, which by the way is amazing. If you guys haven't made it yet, you missed that video, let me know. I'll tag you in it. I use it at least twice a week and my hair, I swear you guys, has never felt better. I was just telling my daughter about it. I've been using the sage and apple cider vinegar and we did the exact same thing we're doing right here. So get that all in. And the same thing, you're pretty much making a different kind of tincture here. And as I said, we're going to be mixing this with honey, but not for at least two weeks. So we want this to infuse. We want all the good properties to come out. And again, we're going to shake it up every couple, uh, every day we're going to shake it a couple times. So I'll go in my pantry and I'll shake these up as well as any other ones that I have in there a couple times a day. And the best thing for you guys to do is to write on here or put a label so you know the date that you put it. And if you're going to have an expectation date, maybe you can put that on there. If not, put the date that you have put this in there. I don't know where my marker is, but I'm going to label these so I know exactly when they were done. And I'm not trying to remember because this one's only two weeks. This one's a minimum of a month. Hello, 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 happy Thursday, and I'm back so we can make our pine salve that I mentioned earlier on in the week for our sustainable skill of the week, making medicine with nature. So I wanted to show you, in case you don't know what I'm using here, this is pine sap, pine resin, or pitch, there's a couple different names for it, doesn't look very pretty because there's lots of bark and stuff in there. But generally, it's just the sap you're going to find on like a white pine, um, a spruce, any kind of any kind of pine tree usually will have this. So this is a mixture of spruce and white pine. So I already infused my oil, which I'm going to show you. So now I also used a whole bunch of white pine needles and branches, and I cut them up and put them in here along with a big handful of my pitch or my resin and I infused it in coconut oil and what I did is I just melted the coconut oil put all my stuff together and I infused it for about four hours on a double boiler and I've let it cool a bit so I can transfer but I wanted to show you the stuff I strained out of it so just right out of nature guys all right so now I got about a cup here and we're actually gonna save some of this for something else because I don't need to make a whole lot of this. So we'll save maybe about half. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do with this little bit here is I'm actually gonna mix it with some lemongrass, olive oil, honey, uh, yarrow, maybe some plantain. Uh, and what that's going to be is it's going to be like a healing salve for cuts and wounds, burns, scrapes, things like that. So I'm going to save this pine resin, this, uh, this oil here, and we'll use that for another batch. So we got this. So we want to put this in our bowl. Get it all in there. Now, you can skip the next step here and just go straight to the beeswax. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil to this and shea butter so it's extra soft. So it can double not only for um, a congestion and cough relief, but we can also use it for a muscle a relief for pain um, and joints and stuff like that. So it's going to have multi-purpose. Pine is amazing 
Uh, it has amazing medicinal properties, antifungal, antimicrobacterial, -mi um, just a whole bunch of antis. And it's just really good and soothing. It's penetrating. It, it helps open up airways and vessel, blood vessels, and it's just a really good medicinal plant for you. So this is going to be multi-purpose. We're going to add in a little olive oil and shea butter to make it just a little softer. But again, this is optional. You can skip the, the oil and the shea butter. So I'm not gonna put too much in. I wanna say about a quarter cup. Because again, I don't wanna make too much. And I don't wanna add too much oil that's not infused already. So just a little bit of olive oil there. Then I have my shea butter. It's 100% raw shea butter. Again, this is optional. You don't need this. I'm going to clean this container out here, and then we're going to try and aim for about a quarter cup. So we're looking for about a cup of liquid in total, just over, and then we're going to add beeswax, which will give it a little bit more. Let's open this one. I didn't open it yet. <laughs> so how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are having a great day, great evening. I'm curious to know if anybody's ever made salves or medicinal medicine like this before. Well, anyway, we're going to continue. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this on the double boiler again. I already have my water going. Let's see, let me take you over here. There. Oh, beans is in the way. So we're just going to put this on here, and we're going to let that shea butter melt down a little bit, and then we're going to add in our beeswax. I'll show you the beeswax I have. Uh, you can get it from all different kinds of places. You can get it from local, uh, uh, your local honey maker. <laughs> uh, so this is what I have. I have uh, nice white beeswax pellets, and this works really great. Um, I really like these ones. Um, they make a really nice salve, so I've been using these for a while. So like I said, we're just going to let that infuse. For a few minutes. Hi, how you doing? How's your day going? Feel free to chime in at any time. Just gonna hang out here for a few minutes while that does its thing on the stove. Back a bit there. So this smells really great. Uh, it's like a really mild Vicks Vapor Rub, and like I said, this whew, it looks doesn't look very great, but as soon as you smell it, you know, bam. It's like Buckley's. Anyway, <laughs> even a Buckley's fan out there, I used to be able to tolerate it. Not anymore. But this stuff, this is just like putting it right all over your chest when you're congested or have a little cough, sore throat. Um, and like I said, this can also be used for if you have sore muscles, aches and pains. It's really good penetrating into your skin. And then like I mentioned, I'm going to mix this next time uh, for my shop, and I'm be making a healing one, a first aid one. Uh, it's gonna be really nice mixed with all those different ingredients, so I'm looking forward to that. So while that's heating, my little tray here. I always keep a tray like this so I don't, if I spill, it just goes in there because what we want to do is when we fill up our tins or our jars or however much I'm gonna get, uh, it needs to go in the fridge right away. And the reason for that is because the shea butter actually, if you I don't know if there's much left in here, but if you can see, it's like little teeny tiny bits. And it'll it'll come back like that. It'll dry like that. So if you put it in the fridge, it cools it down fast enough that those bits disappear and you get a really nice smooth salve or cream. So we want to put this right in the fridge. And of course, I need to carry it and I don't want to spill it all over the place because I probably will. <laughs> so this tray is just perfect. So let's here have a look already almost melted down so now I'm gonna get in my beeswax this is a really fast it's a quick easy process after you've infused your oil but again if you do a big batch and you have it put away then you just need to grab it off the shelf take out what you need and then make up your batches so we're gonna start with a quarter cup I might need about a third a cup of this but we're gonna start with a quarter cup oh company so we'll put this in let this melt it takes a little longer to melt 
then the shea butter. It's really nice. We'll give that a few minutes and then we'll test it out and see if I need to add a little bit more. You just test it out with a spoon, let it cool, and you can see what the thickness is. Really easy. Get that in there. Yeah, I think already I can see we'll need a little bit more. That's okay. Mm, it smells really nice. Not too strong, but strong enough you'll be able to smell it when you put it on, which is what you want when you can't breathe. You want something to loosen it a bit. And the stronger the better. But like I said, this isn't too, too bad. It's real nice. Hi, you guys. How's it going out there? If you're living around here, it's nice and warm today. Kind of like it. All right, so this is melting nicely. So all in all, it's only going to take about 10 minutes to get it all mixed and put in jars and in the fridge. That's not too bad. As long as you take the time to infuse it slowly, whatever herbs you're using. In this case, we're doing pine tonight. Pine is, is amazing. So what I'm going to do with this, because I have lots left and I probably want to use it in other salves in the future. So I'm just going to pop this in the freezer. It's actually going to be really nice in the freezer because it'll come off the bag in just chunks. So that's what I'm going to do with this. It'll preserve as long as I need it in there. And even outside, as long as it uh, was in a dry, cool area, it would last quite a while as well. In the heat, though, it won't last. Whoa, how's it going? Thanks for joining. <laughs> So you ever made a salve before? We're making a pine salve tonight. Clear out the whole congestion for flu season, among other seasons we're having right now. So my beeswax is just about melted. What's your weather like down there? It's really warm here today. I love it. Hi, thanks for joining. Karen, you know, we had a beautiful, lovely, warm day. And next week I saw almost 20 again. I like it. All right. So that's almost melted. We're going to test it out. I'm going to actually get a clean spoon for that. So. Mirror tester here. So see right away it's starting to thicken up. I got a little bit of extra beeswax on there. But I think we're gonna need a little bit more beeswax. That's what I think. So I got another beeswax. I knew it was closer to a third of a cup, but you should always start less and add more just in case. So we just add a pair more here. So the beeswax is what's going to give it, it's, it's going to hold it nicely together. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be pretty loose and oily, which is fine as well. If you don't mind that, you can leave out the beeswax. It'll just be more of a, a grease than a salve or a balm. Good, nice. Well, obviously, I got mine going. <laughs> the nights are still cold here. But like I said, we had a lovely day, so it was really cool. Because uh, we had snow the other day. <laughs> Anyone saw my posts? Oh, no snow. All right. So once this is melted, a few more minutes, guys. And then we're just going to pour it in the containers. And that's it. Super duper easy. So and this is safe for children. It's safe for everybody in the family as long as they're not allergic. Um, that's up to you to know. Uh, but again, this is really gentle and safe, especially if you put in the olive oil and shea butter. It makes it really extra soft, especially for those really wee little ones. Uh, and like I said, it's got that Vicks smell, but it's not overpowering, but it still gives you the, the smell through your, your, your areas there. Shea, shea butter. <laughs> Let me see that. I don't know you can see that. So you can order this in many different styles and varieties. It's up to you where you want to get it. Um, I know Amazon has lots of varieties. You can buy it in bulk. You can buy it in small. I picked this one up at Walmart, believe it or not. 
mix this up here. All right, so we're almost there. Now, once your beeswax melts, it's gonna look like it has a film on it. It's actually not a film, it's just the wax. So don't be alarmed if you see a little bit of um, a discoloration on the top there. It's just the wax that hasn't completely dissolved yet. It's dissolving, don't worry about it. You're not gonna see that extra film on there uh, once you put it in the fridge to cool. Remember, you put it in the fridge to cool and it's gonna do really fast, so it's gonna go nice and smooth. It's gonna leave, get rid of all those little bumps and and uh, any anything in there that, that's not smooth, like, you know, it won't crack or anything. So, I explained that really well. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> okay. So let me find my glove here, and that is it. So I'll see if I can show you what I mean by the discoloration. It almost looks foggy. I don't know if I can see it without pouring it everywhere. It almost looks a little foggy, but like I said, that's just the wax. And we're gonna pour it in the glass jar to start. Mm, it smells really good, guys. natural color fill these up these will make nice gifts and then I'm gonna make a separate batch um, with a whole bunch of other ingredients for my shop and this big glass one is gonna be for our personal use there we go So I'm not gonna put the lids on just yet because um, if I do spill, I don't want the lids to get all in there, get it all in the ring and stuff. So what I'm gonna do is leave it off, make sure there's nothing that got in there, like my long hair. That's embarrassing, <laughs> but I got her out. There we go, just make sure there's nothing in there. I did filter everything, it looks really good, nice and clean. So there you go, I don't know if you can see it. So when it dries, or when it cools, I should say, it's gonna be more of a, a solid yellow than this, this kind of clear yellow here. And that's it, guys. Once it's cooled, you can use it right away, put it on, and you're good to go. Uh, just keep it in your cabinet, and it should last for, for six months to a year. Uh, that's it, that's all. I put in, I put in about a third of a cup in total I had a, a one cup of liquid so I put in half a cup of my infused coconut oil and then I added in a quarter cup of olive oil and then a quarter cup of shea butter and then I added in a third of a cup of beeswax so but I did mention that you can leave out the olive oil and you can leave out the the uh, shea butter just put less beeswax <laughs> it smells really good oh my goodness so that's it guys i showed you so far this week how to make four different kinds of medicine um if i can if i have time on the weekend i'm going to come back and show you guys a little bit of things you could do with onions onions are amazing in fact i'll just tell you real quick uh for the it's really funny but if some of you may know this old wives tale about hanging onions on your bedpost or around your neck or on your feet uh, when you can't sleep or beside your your nightstand um, that's true it actually works so onions are great if you can't breathe if, if you have kids or grandkids who don't like putting uh, anything on put some onions in their room hopefully they won't cry about it <laughs> literally uh, but it will help um, clear them out as they sleep through the night uh, that's a really good just simple simple trick there onions they're awesome so that's it. You're welcome. Thanks for joining me. And if I have time, I'll come back on Saturday and show you uh, how to do some honey elixirs and syrups and stuff. Um, onion, I mean. And until then, have a good one. And remember to practice some of these skills at home so you can have your own medicine and all these things available uh, that you've made and done yourself with nature that's healthy and organic. So have a good one and talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and